Now what happens when you go to the post-spawn period, they don't guard their nest. The boys are a little friskier. They go in to do the thing, we're like boys, let's keep going. They'll stay in that area for an upwards of a month. Now when you go back up the arm in June 1st when it opens, excuse me, you can go up there guys, our best day up there, not to brag, but just to prove a point, was three people, 183 walleyes. I've done two guys, John Fredrickson from Tolber Marina, and I went up there. He's a Minnesota guy. Two guys, 156 walleyes. You can get into one eddy, and you can catch 70, 80 fish in one spot. They're males. What you'll notice is that once they start to fill the lake and the current starts to back up and slow down, all of a sudden the males start to dispense. You get in the current around June 1st when it opens, it's going to be ridiculous for you. Or I told you my buddy had the rod, if I can get six, I'll be lucky. We caught 88 that day. And that's just because they're so highly concentrated. They're feeding on anything. Anything, they're grabbing it. Now the females, on the other hand, as soon as they go do their thing, they start heading back. They start heading back to the main reservoir. Now, the arm, if you look at the arm, it's deep enough that they can go out down Blue Creek in those areas and set up camp for a while. The females are going to go through about a two-week recuperation period where you're not going to be able to touch them. Now, granted, not all of them are coming down at once because not all the eggs ripen at the same time. But what's going to happen, all of a sudden, you're going to go get these fish that are 16, 22 inches, a pile of them, and no big ones. Maybe, maybe you get eight pound male. I've seen it happen. Every time we go up there, you'll get one big fish, and you know, six, seven pounds, whatever. But those females go down to the recuperation. Where they're gonna end up going is they're looking for a flat that has deep water. They're gonna go down there and rest where the light's low. They're gonna hang out. But they wanna be near the zone where they can get up on a flat and feed when they're ready they're going to be hungry. So what you get into is that post-spawn period. So keep that in mind. As soon as it's done, the females move out. The males hang around. So if you want to go for numbers, you get up into the current. You get on those windswept shorelines, you're going to catch a lot of fish. It's not like the bass where when they go uh, post-spawn, they get hard to catch all the way around because the male's been doing what? He's been hanging out on the bed, guarding it, not really eating anything. So he's tired. The female was tired because she's been on and off of bed two or three, four times spawning. So they all recover. Males and stuff don't do that. They'll keep eating. So if you want to get numbers, you get into those areas where there's current, where you got wind blowing a nice rocky shoreline, you'll catch a lot of fish. If you want to go for big fish and work, you're going to have to go find one of these down from the spawning area. Best thing I can tell you, down at Blue Creek. We fish Blue Creek a lot. I got a rock pile down there. Comes up from about 80 feet of water up to about 10. And that's where we catch a lot of big fish that time of year. Post spawn fish. They're down in there, they can rest, but they're next to a spawning flat. They can pull up on there and feed when they're ready. So it's a matter of timing. Do you want to go out and catch a bunch or do you want to go out and catch the big ones? Once that two week period is passed, and that's typically, you know, it just like I said, depends on the year. That may be when that first opener gets back up in there after June 1st when it opens. And keep in mind, you, you can fish all over that place. There's huge fish down in Hawk Creek. Nobody fishes Hawk Creek anymore. There's huge fish in there. They go up in Hawk Creek and spawn. You don't have the tens of thousands going up in there like you do the Spokane Arm because it wouldn't support it. But you still have big fish in there. They're still there. You can go up north, mouth of the Colville, mouth of the Ketchum. Don't just think you gotta, everybody's got to go to the Arm because they're all through that thing. So travel with it, you know, move north if you want to keep on top of those big fish, you know, still pre-spawn. They'll still be pre-spawn when these fish are spawning down here, and it's not shut down, okay? Now, what we're looking at, we go to what's called our early summer period. And our early summer period is basically the fish have come out of their post-spawn. Now they're ready to eat. 
Males, they've been eating the whole time. What's going to happen? They're going to run down. They're going to start gathering back up with the females. Now, they won't live in the same groups. You know, the, the little males ain't going to be with the big females all the time. But they'll start getting into the same areas. Where they're going to go, where you're going to concentrate your efforts on, is you're going to be fishing these flats. You're going to be fishing them shallow. You're going to be casting out jerk baits. You're going to be trolling with planer boards, all the stuff we're going to cover. And you're going to be jigs, whatever. Reason being is there's still a lack of what in the water? Forage. Forage. Everything spawned, your perch, everything spawned, but they're not nothing in there big enough to eat yet. So this post pond period can be just as strong as the pre. The females won't be as big because they've dropped their skeins, but you're still going to get big fish. And what you have to do is get on these flats and cover them right here. This is, yeah, you're looking at about, this is going to be June through maybe the 1st of July. Somewhere in that, right in that period right there. So, the reason why they can get in there and stay shallow, how many of you go out swimming in June in Roosevelt? No. It's still cool enough for them to want to be there, right? Temperature's still cool enough. It hasn't gotten hot yet. We're not breaking that 65 degree mark yet. The key is, is you're going to have to watch the light. And we'll talk about the light effects, but you're going to have to watch the light. But they're going to be up on flats. If you go back Midwest, guys, during this period that we're talking about from pre-spawn all the way through post-spawn into early summer, guys are trolling like crazy at night. I'm just the guy that does it in the fall. They do the same thing at night in the springtime because those fish are moving up. They're checking out their spawning areas in pre-spawn, right? They're doing it at night. Same thing's going to happen in this shallow water because the light, low light feeding. So you either get your butt out of bed early or you sleep in and you stay late. It's the key with the walleyes. So make sure we got this here. Yep. Post spawn, you, you'd be, you could be night trolling, is that what you're saying? Definitely. It's still aggressive. Oh, yeah. Yep. Yeah, but what you're going to end up having to do, more than likely, you're going to have to do with boards. Just because if you go through that shallow water and the motor's turning, you're going to spook them out because they hear really well. So you, have, but you need to be trolling, you, you can't be... Oh, you can cast. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll talk about the difference. One's used to find them, the other one's used to sit on them. So does the difference between electric and a, and a gas rig make... Oh yeah, make makes a big difference. difference. Yeah, it does. It does. But so you might, might get away with that, or maybe put two flat lines, two, two boards. You, you could run, yeah, you could mix it up if you wanted. We typically always spread with boards, <coughs> whatever we're using. I got a 101 on the back, 36 volt. We control that, or we control with the kicker motor. And I'll always run boards either way, just because they're sensitive. Mm -hmm. They're sensitive in the shallow water like that. Now, what we're going to do, we're going to talk about the summer period. So, let's recap it. We're 40 to 60 foot wintertime right now. Pre spawn, early spring. We're following these contours, but we're coming up and checking things out. When you get to the pre spawn period, guys, a lot of our biggest fish, we put the boat in 30 feet of water, cast up to the shore. Usually it's about 18 feet. That's the magic number. We're going back. Females, post-spawn, they want to be down deeper. Low light, back to that mark again, 40 to 60 or so. We come into the early summer, we're hungry, we're fishing shallower. We're back up shallow again. When we move into summertime, Walleye Jim know this well. Walleye Jim and I went out and we didn't do diddly. Summertime, guys, can be one of the most difficult times because you have a lot of what in the water by this time. Yeah. All everything that's spawned out is swimming around, yay big. We got, you know, a lot of uh, insect stuff moving around in there. A ton of food. Makes it very tough fishing. The other thing that happens 
is now our water temperature is getting higher. Our, our sun's getting higher. I'm going to show you sun stuff coming up. Our sun's getting higher. We don't like, walleyes don't like what? Light. Light and warmer temperatures. Now what happens is they tend to spread out. Location's not a big thing to them anymore. They may go from a drop off there in 20 feet of water and they swim straight across the reservoir and they're in 300 feet of water, 30 feet down. That's what gets tough about them. That's why guys always go north. They're chasing that cooler water. And June was a great month. That's why they have the big tournament up there in June. They pull some big fish. They get quite a few fish. They're still biting good. Now they're, they're cruising. They're harder to find. Reason being is we've got the light, so we want to be down. We've got a lot of forage in the lake. So we've got all kinds of areas to feed now. The other thing that happens is walleyes have to have a high concentration of oxygen. As that, remember the three layers, our thermocline, our epilimnion, and our hypolimnion, upper and lower. As summer wears on, the oxygen will start to deplete in that upper layer. So where is the most oxygen? Down right, basically on top of the thermocline. That's where they want to be at. The temperature's right, they can cruise do their thing. So what you have to do, some of your best walleye fishermen in the summertime are guys out there trolling for rainbow trout and kokanee. Why? Because they're fishing for what the big dudes want to eat. And they're cruising the thermocline. Now it's not uncommon at this time to have walleyes go down 90 to 100 feet. Reason being, your little mycid shrimp, you know those little buggers, they ruin everything. Priest Pondere, that's a different story. They like to go down, dark, it's cold. The walleyes can't stay down there for a long period of time because there's not a lot of oxygen. The dissolved oxygen rate's decreasing. Four parts per million or less, they don't want to be there. They want to be a little higher than that. But what they can do is drop down, it's dark, it's cool, they open their mouth, they swim around, whoosh, taking those shrimp in. Just like when the mayfly thing happens, they can just swim around, ah, I wish I could eat like that. Just <laughs> people throwing stuff in there, it'd be great, wouldn't it? But it's the same principle. It's the same principle. Now they will come back up, because they have to. They gotta come back up to get the oxygen. But they can swim around with less effort and just take stuff in. If they were down there having to chase things around, they couldn't do it. There's not enough oxygen for them to do it. So that's what becomes tough. They could be down there, or they could be up at that thermal climb. Typically the best thing to do is to try to fish that thermal climb. Can you see that's about 18 feet or something? No, no, no. That, it depends as summer wears on, but you know, 30, maybe 50 feet. And what you have to realize is that up, if you go up to the northern end, where you got the Columbia rolling in unaffected, you're not going to have one up there because you have current going through which is causing a constant mix. The lower pool where it sets up and it's not moving, the thermocline will develop. That's something you have to keep in mind when you go up above, it won't be like that. You know, you cross the bridge at Kettle, you get out there in your boat and it's rolling. So those fish kind of using whatever, they're all over the place because the current's mixing it. So there's oxygen in it. It's all the way through the depths. The temperature's more consistent, just like when you fish under a dam. Temperature's more consistent because the water's coming out of the bottom of the lake. They're still gonna follow the same feeding pattern, yeah. Same same feeding pattern. It just may be a little more difficult to find them. When Walla Jim is an example, we went up there at Kettle. When was that, Jim? August? End of August? Mm -hmm. We went up. Jim promised me all these big fish. I spent all this money on gas. <laughs> and just so you know, thanks doesn't buy gas. I've tried it. I've walked into the gas station and said thanks and I can't fill my tank. <laughs> just picking on him. Jim and I went up and we had low pressure come through. We had, it was cloudy that day. You're thinking everything's right. And we couldn't buy a bite. Jim caught one that was, I don't know. <laughs> we won't talk about it. But he caught one. 
moral of the story was we jigged, we trolled harnesses, <laughs> the harnesses. We pulled cranks, and you ended up catching one on a crank. But, guys, we couldn't buy a bite. And what you have to understand is that when you go out as summertime progresses, you're going to run into this. Don't get mad. Don't get discouraged. It's going to happen. I'm not the best, but I'm not the worst, and it will happen. It has to do with there's a lot of forage. They're spread all over the place. They're hard to find. About what, Jim? Two weeks afterwards, your buddy went up there and they caught, or no, it was a... Uh, it was, no, it was like two or three days later. Mm -hmm. Two or three days later, his buddy went up and we had fished and they caught, what, 20-something? Yeah. 26. Something like that. Just like that, boom. So, the, the, you know, don't get discouraged by it. You know, the thing you got to keep in mind, you know, when you saw Chad and I go down and catch those walleyes, we had three nights trying to pattern them because they were totally different this year. Where we sat down there in 18 degree weather going, this is fun. And nothing happened. But yet we were persistent at it and big stuff happened. It's the same with all fish. But while it's in the summertime, man, they get tough. And we're gonna talk to you when we get to the rigging about some things that you can do to kind of help prevent that. You know, I look back at what Jim and I did and there was probably some stuff that I should have done differently but I kind of get stuck in my ways a little bit. Kind of get that way a little cranky sometimes. Would you, but would you say it's pressure at the last three They say that the pressure on walleyes doesn't have hardly anything to do with it at all. And we're going to talk about that coming up. Oh, damn. It's told, these guys, these fit They're guys, one yeah, the yeah. walleyes, <laughs> walleyes are totally different. They've done test after test and found that pressure doesn't really seem to have an effect. They say, well, when the pressure drops, well, guys, when high pressure, when we talked about high pressure, when pressure drops, what happens up above? What starts to happen? Clouds? Clouds do what to the sun? They like low light. Let's eat. So there's not a real link there. They've tried to, they've tried to dispel it. Is it pressure? And they say that, you know, a lot of it has to do with the clouds form, the light gets cut down, and they start to bite. So pressure, you can't use that as an excuse with the walleyes like you can the others. They're just different. You gotta look at them different. They see different. They see different colors. They feel things a little different. That's what, that's what you have to do with these guys.